Hello and welcome to the 7 o'clock news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Lebrick. فإننا نشكر كل بحريني وبحرينية صوت على ميثاق العمل الوطني فجميعنا شركاء في الوطن مهما اختلفت الآراء وتعددت وندعو الجميع للمشاركة الإيجابية في خدمة الوطن والحفاظ على الثوابت الوطنية On February 14th of 2001, 98.4% of the Bahraini population said yes to the National Action Charter, ushering in a series of reforms in the political, economic, social and humanitarian fields. More details in this report with Mohamed Shaban. The Kingdom is celebrating the 17th anniversary of the endorsement of the National Action Charter today. This document, put forth by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa in 2001, laid the bases and foundations for the process of reform which ushered the country to the civilized constitutional status it enjoys today. The charter, which was endorsed by 98.4% of the population on February the 14th of 2001, was the steering wheel for the countless achievements made in the kingdom, as is evident by the gains in the political, economic, social and human development arenas during the past 17 years. The Charter set the path for a package of political changes paving the way for the new constitution and the national parliamentary elections with the establishment of a new legislator, the National Assembly. The National Action Charter ushered in an era of freedoms of speech and the press in Bahrain. The daily and weekly publications went up from 4 to 14 in the past decade, representing different schools of thought. The government also made numerous strides in the field of human rights, establishing the National Human Rights Institute in 2010, based on international standards and closely cooperating with the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights, which led to the promotion of tolerance and coexistence in the country. The Charter laid the foundations for the Economic Vision 2030 as well. The vision adopts the objectives of diversifying the economy and the sources of national income to face the different challenges. This while reinforcing the role of the private sector and ultimately improving the citizens' living standards. These gains were evident in the different ranks Bahrain scored in global index reports, including the Fraser Institute's 2017 Economic Freedom Report, which shows Bahrain along with the UAE as the most economically free nations in the Arab world. Significant social gains have also been made in Bahrain during the past 17 years, thanks to the National Action Charter, key amongst which is the empowerment of women, with the establishment of the Supreme Council for Women and the growing role of women in government, holding high positions including in the National Assembly, Judiciary and serving as ambassadors. The National Action Charter continues to be celebrated as it remains a pillar of the positive change and advancement of our beloved kingdom. Hamid Shaban, Bahrain International News. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa in the presence of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa received at Sukhir Palace today members of the Royal Family on the occasion of the 17th anniversary of the National Action Charter. Verses of the Holy... Verses of the Holy Quran were recited. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Amanar Rasul Bima Unzila 
إليه من ربه والمؤمنون كل آمن بالله وملائكته وكتبه ورسله لا نفرق بين أحد من رسله وقالوا سمعنا وأطعنا غفرانك ربنا وإليك المصير لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها لها ما كسبت وعليها ما اكتسبت ربنا لا تؤاخذنا إن نسينا أو أخطأنا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إصرا كما حملته كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به واعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين صدق الله العظيم Bahraini Ardo was then performed.
After that, His Majesty the King, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, as well as the members of the royal family, gathered to take a group photo. The royal family members extended sincere congratulations on the occasion to His Majesty the King, praising the achievements of the kingdom during His Majesty's era. They also wished His Majesty the King abundant health and success and Bahrain for their progress and prosperity. His Majesty the King expressed thanks for the sincere wishes, recalling with appreciation the stance of Bahraini people in this historic day, which reflects its commitment to the National Action Foundation, which was the beginning of a new stage of joint action and comprehensive development. His Majesty affirmed that the National Action Charter is a distinguished transition in the modern history of the Kingdom, adding that it contributed to creating new opportunities for the Kingdom. His Majesty stressed that the Bahraini citizens will always be the core of development, commending the competence and expertise of Bahrainis, which results in excellent achievements in international forms. He added that this reflects Bahrain's sincere belonging to their country and their keenness to promote it in all fields. His Majesty the King expressed appreciation to the Bahrain Defense Force and Ministry of Interior affiliates for their continued efforts to protect and secure the stability of the kingdom. He highlighted the coordination and cooperation between these two bodies and the combat readiness of their affiliates, valuing the sacrifices of the martyrs of duty to protect their country. He also affirmed that the kingdom will continue its march towards development and to consolidate the the foundations of civil state based on justice and equality, the protection of rights and freedoms, respect for the law, and the promotion of values of modernization, tolerance, and coexistence. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa patronized today part of the national celebration organized by the Ministry of Education on the occasion of the 17th National Action Charter, the NAC anniversary, at the NAC monument in Sakhir. Upon arrival, His Majesty the King was received by the Minister of Education, Dr. Majid bin Ali Al Naimi, and a number of senior officials at the ministry. Following the national anthem and a musical piece played by a student orchestra, the students, Mithaq Sayyid Abbas and Mithaq Ibrahim, who were born on the National Action Charter's voting day, presented His Majesty the King with a commemorative gift. A number of students delivered a national dialogue act, and the charter of virtue operetta was then performed. His Majesty the King expressed thanks and appreciation to the participants in the event, hailing the national values presented in the celebration was reflects the efforts the educational institutions exerted in forming the national patriotism culture and the consolidation of citizenship concepts through educational curriculums and student activities. For his part, the Minister of Education expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for patronizing the celebration, and he affirmed that the Minister is keen on implementing directives of His Majesty the King on bolstering the Arab identity of Bahrain and on supporting student talents in various fields. The minister then honored the distinguished students. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received today at Sakhir Palace the Minister of Royal Court Affairs, Sheikh Ali bin Isa Al Khalifa. The meeting was in the presence of the Prime Minister, His Royal Highness, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, and the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander, and First Deputy Prime Minister, His Royal Highness, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. Sheikh Ali bin Isa presented His Majesty with an invitation to his son's wedding. Sheikh Khalid bin Ali bin Isa Al Khalifa, His Majesty wished Sheikh Khalid a happy married life. The National Action Charter Monument is considered to be one of the symbolic structures in Bahrain's modern history as it represents the kingdom's impressive achievements and the loyalty of the citizens to the king and the country. More in this report. Inaugurated in 2010, the National Charter Monument was commissioned by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa as a gift to the people of Bahrain. The monument commemorates Bahrain's adoption of the National Action Charter by a sweeping 98.4% majority on February 14 and 15, 2001, thus paving the way for the launch of the pioneering Royal Reform Project. The monument is one of the most symbolic structures in Bahrain's modern history and links the new generation with the modern and historic heritage of the kingdom. According to the vision of His Majesty King Hamad, the structure records the patriotic contributions of national work pioneers 
and includes the names of all those who voted for the 2001 National Action Charter. It reflects the people's support for the royal leadership, their resolve to maintain the social fabric, and their contribution to enhancing Bahrain's democratic march. The building explores national history and identity in a series of vivid and unique visitor experiences. These include the National Action Charter Show, as well as programs and functions aiming to upgrade national culture, promote national creative thought, and contribute to educational and cultural programs in cooperation with the relevant national and international establishments and organizations. Through these initiatives and more, the structure instills the basis of national unity and highlights the kingdom's rich cultural heritage, all the while documenting the contributions of the Bahraini people in actualizing the aspirations of His Majesty King Hamad in leading the current and future generations to further development and progress. The National Charter Monument is a vivid embodiment of the vision of a king and the history of a nation. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Shogh Mohammed. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa today inaugurated the former ruler of Bahrain, the late Sheikh Salman bin Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's mosque in Awali. In the presence of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, His Royal Highness recalled with appreciation the contributions of the late Sheikh Salman bin Hamad to the Islamic nation. His Royal Highness expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for his directives to build the mosque. He affirmed the government's keenness on building mosques and worship houses across the kingdom, noting the importance of maintaining Islamic establishments to spread noble Islamic values. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince toured the mosque, accompanied by the Chairman of the Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs, Sheikh Abdullah bin Khalid Al Khalifa, and a number of senior members of the royal family.
His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received today at Ghadibiyya Palace the Saudi Ambassador to Bahrain, Dr. Abdullah bin Abdul Malik Al Sheikh. His Royal Highness affirmed that Bahraini Saudi relations have their unique historic dimensions and are widely supported for their close ties and common destiny, expressing pride in the development of Bahraini Saudi relations and their continuous endeavors to bolster them. The Prime Minister stated that Saudi Arabia is of strategic importance for Arabs and Muslims and possesses a political and religious status that enhances its role under the leadership of the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud, until it became the shield that protects Islam and Muslims and defends their causes. During the meeting, the two sides reviewed a number of topics related to regional and international developments. His Royal Highness hailed the Saudi leadership stances towards Arab and Islamic causes and its leading role in supporting regional and whole securities in the world's security, stability and peace. His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa today visited the headquarters of the Aluminium Bahrain, ALBA, during which ALBA's Line 6 project was reviewed. The Line 6 expansion project will result in ALBA becoming the world's largest aluminium smelter, produ producing 1.5 million metric tons of aluminium each year. During the visit, His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince, inspected the Line 6 expansion project, which is on track to launch in January 2000. 2019. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince stated that Alba's inception in 1971 marked the beginning of Bahrain's strategy to diversify its economic base and the company continues to make a substantial contribution to non-oil sector growth. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince reaffirmed that ongoing development projects worth over 32.5 billion US dollars are designated or designed to benefit and provide opportunities for citizens, noting that the Line 6 expansion project is set to create 3,200 200 jobs for Bahrainis. Speaking on the occasion, the chairman of Alba's board of directors, Sheikh Daej bin Salman Al Khalifa, expressed gratitude for His Royal Highness's visit. He affirmed that the Line 6 expansion project will further strengthen Alba's role in supporting sustainable economic growth and increasing the kingdom's regional and international competitiveness, noting that the aluminum industry comprises of 12% of the kingdom's GDP. He confirmed that Alba's ongoing success is a direct result of the kingdom's development program as well as the strength of the kingdom's skills base noting that Bahrainis comprise 85% of Alba's workforce. Alba is delivering significant progress across all Line 6 expansion project components. The Line 6 smelter is more than 44% progressed and Power Station 5 is 52% progressed and the power distribution system is 72% progressed. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince was received by Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, Deputy Prime Minister and Chairman of Mumtalakat, Chairman of Alba's Board of Directors, Sheikh Daeed bin Salman bin Daej Al Khalifa and the CEO of Bishtel Group, Brendan P. Bishtel.
Aluminium Bahrain, the first aluminium smelter in the Gulf region, has been making steady strides in the construction of its landmark Line 6 expansion project, one of the largest brownfield developments in the region, expected to begin production by January 1, 2019. This project will boost the smelters per annum production by 540,000 metric tons, bringing its total production capacity to 1.5 million metric tons per year, making Alba the largest smelter in the world. To give you an idea how big that is, if you look at the United States, the United States is roughly 800,000 tons of production. So little Bahrain will be almost twice the size of the United States in terms of aluminium production. So we'll be adding 540,000 tons. Of Half of that is targeted for the Bahrain downstream. Uh, in terms of jobs, Alba will be adding 500 direct jobs. And then in the downstream, we hope for another two to 3,000 jobs. So with a capital expenditure of approximately 3 billion US dollars, the Line 6 expansion project involves the construction of a sixth part line utilizing EGA's proprietary DX Plus Ultra technology, a 1,792 megawatt power station, and other industrial services. In 2017, we secured the financing of Line 6 that covered $1.5 billion, which is the syndicated loan which is the largest syndicated loan in Bahrain history. And also we managed by end of 2017 to close all the ECA, export credit agencies. The focused approach adopted by Alba's team has yielded nicely in the progress of engineering, 79%, procurement, 83%, contracts, 97%, and construction, 17% simultaneously. Moreover, Alba isn't only about working efficiently. It continues to keep safety as its number one priority in all its operations. Seven million man-hours without any incidents. And this is a good record, and we want our site to be the safest site uh, amongst all the projects happening in the region. And by end of this project, we will consume more than 25 million man hours. And it will be a good record of, uh, uh, for safety, and we will strive to keep that safety record. In 2017, Alba recorded 2.3 billion US dollar revenues with a 981,000 metric tons record of production, which will definitely increase after the completion of the project and the huge boost in production, positively contributing to Bahrain's economic growth as aluminium products are 12% of its GDP. Dreams don't come true through magic. They take sweat, determination and hard work. Aluminium Bahrain is changing challenges into possibilities through the great progress it's making in the Line 6 expansion project, making it the largest smelter in the world. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Heba Abdul -Ghafur. The Ministry of Youth and Sports Affairs will soon launch the first Nasr bin Hamad League for universities. The league will include team games such as football, basketball and handball. A number of public and private universities will take part in the league. The representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs, Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasr bin Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, affirmed that the policies of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports underline the importance of the link between sports and education, and their aim is to better the physical abilities of youth. His Highness noted that the continuous organization of sporting and physical activities offers numerous social and health benefits as it enhances the physical ability and lifestyle of students. He added that sports is an effective tool in achieving the goals of sustainable development that are concerned with linking sports to education and health. 
The first deputy chairman of the Supreme Council of Youth and Sports, President of Bahrain Athletics Association, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, extended his sincere congratulations to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and to the Prime Minister, His Royal Highness Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, and to the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander, and First Deputy Prime Minister, His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, as well as to the people of the Kingdom of Bahrain on the occasion of the 17th anniversary of the National Action Charter, which falls on the 14th of February. His Highness Sheikh Khalid affirmed that this national occasion is an opportunity for all to recall the great achievements made, which contributed to the prosperity and advancement of the Kingdom. His Highness highlighted that the National Action Charter is a landmark in the Kingdom's history that exemplifies the noble attributes the Bahraini people have voted on by a 98.4% majority and has given the people the opportunity to, to re opportunity to reaffirm their allegiance to the leadership. He added that the National Action Charter has paved the way for sustainable development in all sectors, praying the Almighty of further prosperity and development, as well as the prevalence of peace and security. His Highness Sheikh Khalid continued to state that the youth and sports sector has witnessed a remarkable leap during the prosperous era of His Majesty the King due to the development strategy set by the representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs Chairman of the Supreme Council of Youth and Sports and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasr bin Hamad Al Khalifa. His Highness noted that this strategy has contributed to the development of youth cap capacities and the promotion of uh, the principles of loyalty and patriotism, as well as uh, to push the youth towards creativity and innovation. This had elevated Bahrain's status on the international arena. The Minister of Interior, Lieutenant General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, participated yesterday in the activities and events marking Bahrain Sports Day. The event followed directives uh, from His Royal Highness the Prime Minister to mark the Sports Day, supported by representatives of His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs, Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa. The Minister said that the participation of all directors in this national occasion was part of the community partnership and the reinforcement of sports as a value and a practice for a healthy lifestyle and safety. The efforts of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and the Bahrain Olympic Committee under the chairmanship of His Highness Sheikh Nasser to enhance sports and promotion of youth as the top national priorities. He hailed the role of the Public Security Sec Sports Association, governance and the ministry's directorates for their participation in the day's sports events as part of a comprehensive program to be involved in various activities and games. The ministry's directorates marked the occasion with various events that started with walking programs and then different sports games. This minister also, the minister also attended the finals of various sports competitions that launched a few days back. He honored officers and non-commissioned commissioned officer, commission officers who have been involved in sports for the last 25 years and employees who won regional, Arab, Asian and international sports championships in 2017, in addition to the ministry's winners of the Bahrain Sports Day. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, participated today in the Kuwait International Conference for Reconstruction of Iraq. The Minister affirmed that Bahrain has always stood along Iraq in fighting the terrorist organization Daesh, building the new Iraq through its international recognition of Iraq. He also stressed the contribution or the continuation of the Kingdom's support to all measures that aim at reinforcing Iraq's security and stability. He expressed his appreciation to the Emir of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Sabah Al Ahmed Al Jabr Al Sabah, for his initiative to host the conference. The Minister of Foreign Affairs pointed out that the Kingdom has been keen to contribute to empowering the Iraqi government to build the capacity of its government institutions, providing the necessary facilities in the Kingdom of Bahrain to train and qualify qualify 4,000 Iraqi civil defense caters and trained Iraqi health technicians in the public health laboratory. The minister stated that the kingdom has participated actively since the first day of the formation of the global coalition to fight Daesh, adding that it also played a prominent role in combating the financing of Daesh and has held several international conferences to combat the financing of terrorism. He stressed that the reconstruction process requires a comprehensive strategy that includes the diversity of sources of funding 
funding and the active participation of the private sector. He also highlighted the importance of civil society organizations in the return of all displaced people to their homes, adding that the international financial institutions should play an important role as a partner in the reconstruction of Iraq. On the sidelines of the Kuwait International Conference for the Reconstruction of Iraq, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, met with the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Adil bin Ahmed Al Jubair. The meeting discussed regional and international issues and affirmed the continuous coordination between Bahrain and Saudi Arabia in all forms to consolidate security, peace, and stability in the region and in the world.